we're going to see over the next couple of decades that this kind of discovery is going to lead to a, a sea change in our approach to psychiatric disease and ultimately to the treatment of psychiatric disease. I think this paper really is the beginning of a new epoch. These findings begin to tie together lots of other information that was already known but we couldn't really organize. I think this is a real landmark. I think this is going to change everything. We discovered the molecular basis for the human genome's largest and most mysterious influence on risk of schizophrenia at a population level. For a long time, the genetics of schizophrenia resembled a featureless landscape. There was just no place to get traction. The genetics here led us to something that was very surprising. It was, it was so surprising that for some time many people even doubted whether it was true. But this is exactly the dream. Certain areas of the genome are involved in disease, and variants in those areas end up having peaks of associations resembling towers in Manhattan. The association to this MHC locus stands out as being a towering peak of association, but when we actually look more closely at this region, it looks more like a plateau. That has made it challenging to identify which gene or which set of genes within this region are actually driving the association with schizophrenia. What's really exciting about this paper, finding that the culprit was this C4 gene, the surprising thing was how hard it was to recognize that, because the C4 gene, unlike most genes, is a mess. It's got multiple different flavors and multiple copies of those different flavors, all cheek to jowl in a little region of chromosome six. It's a really messy, ragged structure. Ashwin came to the lab and just took this as a challenge. He, he would just, every time he would hear people describe this as an intractable problem, he would just get more excited about it. This seemed like the kind of uh, finding where going after it seemed like it could really deepen our understanding of the biology of schizophrenia. I'll never forget what that plot looked like. It was one of those really special moments in science where you see an analysis that's, that's so clarifying. And I knew in that minute that we were gonna spend the next year and the years after that deepening what he had just discovered. When they came to me uh, with this result, this was amazing, it was exciting. And they knew that my lab had been studying uh, complement and its role in normal pruning. Putting these two pieces of data together, these two ideas together, and the fact that pruning defects have been thought to underlie uh, schizophrenia, we started thinking about the possibility that maybe in the brain, complement molecules were similarly tagging these extra synapses in the developing brain. Complement component 4 has long been known for its role in the immune system, but we found that, that C4 is also playing a role in the development of the nervous system at critical times. So this data suggests that indeed this pathway is activated much like it is in the immune system, so a very similar mechanism. This also gives us the possibility of being able to develop tools and, and someday therapeutics to inhibit this cascade on potentially multiple levels. One of the things we've desperately needed in our effort to understand schizophrenia has been an appreciation of what key molecular and cellular events in the development of the illness are. This result is important because it points to a normal developmental process, the process of, of synapse elimination and interaction between neurons and microglia, 
as something that may go out of control in the development of schizophrenia. And that points the light toward new potential ways of trying to develop treatments for schizophrenia. So now moving forward with this knowledge, um, I think we can start to really think about ways to develop better therapeutics to block or manipulate different aspects of the complement cascade. This not only has implications for schizophrenia, but for a lot of other neurological disorders that range from autism to Alzheimer's disease. This will turn out to be the most important break in the disease. Again, I want to be really clear, it's not going to lead to immediate treatments. We have to be careful and cautious about it, but actually understanding what's wrong with the disease is the most important thing in eventually being able to treat a disease. There is really light now that we can see at the end of a long, dark tunnel of ignorance. For the first time, I think we really have our bearings in the biology, and I have no doubt that the road will be hard, it will be longer than we want, but I think we now finally know where we're going.